Hi, this is Mobile Network Comparison, and today I'm just going to give a quick run over, well, a quick rundown of the new Zopo ZP998, which has just been released and should be hitting Europe pretty quickly now as it gets shipped over from China. So, this is again a Chinese smartphone running Android, Android Jelly Bean 4.2.1 at present. And the reason why this is hitting the headlines in quite a big way right now is it's the first true 8-core CPU smartphone released in the world. And this is pretty impressive. I mean, there are already, of course, 8-core smartphones in existence using 8-core CPUs, but they're somewhat restricted in that you can't actually use all 8-cores simultaneously, so it's kind of a bit pointless. This is the first true 8-core processor, and it's coming from the MediaTek MTK MT6592 chipset. So what you've got with that chipset is the Cortex A7 8-core processor running at 1.7 gigahertz and it's also got a Mali 450 MP4 700 MHz CPU. So as you can see from these um, images, it's actually quite a beautiful looking handset. It comes in black and white and it's got this lovely sort of textured back cover which makes it really easy to grip and also a huge um, gorgeous vivid 5.5 inch touchscreen which is at full HD 1920 by 1080p resolution so it looks fantastic let's just quickly run down some of the specs and I'll go through some of the promotional materials that Zopo have released for this phone so as well as that um, beastly 1.7 gigahertz processor we've also got 32 gigabyte internal flash ROM 2 gigabytes of RAM, which is great. It's got, of course, a micro SD card slot. It's not 4G, which is unfortunate, but it is um, 3G and has HSPA+, all the usual um, radios and networking options. It's also got a really impressive 14 megapixel camera with flash on the back, um, and that can, of course, also take 1080p video. It's even got a 5 megapixel camera on the front, which is becoming more and more standard for Chinese smartphones nowadays. Apart from that, it's just the usual array of, of stuff, to be honest, Bluetooth version 4, GPS, USB on the go, all these sorts of things, Wi-Fi, BG and N. It should be available with English language ROMs with Google Play Store and all that sort of stuff. So just a quick word on the screen. It looks great. 5.5 inch 1080p, that puts it at a pretty high um, pixel density. So we're talking about 401 just over 400 pixels per inch. So it's gonna look crystal clear and sharp and a really beautiful screen. And to power this um, um, processor, GPU, and huge bright screen, we've got a 2,400 milliamp hour battery, which Zopo is saying is gonna give you a standby time of about 270 hours. And um, we've been pretty impressed with the battery time that Zopo phones have provided in the past. So it'll be really interesting to see how long it actually lasts in real world use. And just a quick thing, um, so it's obviously quite a large phone, but as you can see from these images, the bezel's pretty thin, um, the screen pretty much takes up the entire front of it, and I'm amazed by this. It only weighs 150 grams with the battery and is less than a centimetre thick, only 9.1 millimetres. So it looks really, really promising, and we can't wait to get our hands on one just to see how it actually performs in the real world. And I mean, as you can see from these images, it looks beautiful. Let's go through some of the um, stuff that Zopo is telling us about it. So, first of all, um, well, we're going to have to excuse the slightly dodgy translation from Chinese here, but um, here's one feature that it's got, and it's called B&E Voice Technology, or BVE Voice. I mean, I think it is B&E. I'm not really sure what any of these things stand for, but... Um, says it's got this sort of tracking beam but basically what this is doing is it just monitors your your ambient noise around you in your environment to um, decide how sensitive to make the microphone so that even if you're standing far away from the phone it can increase the volume a little bit so that you can be heard clearly and if it's quite noisy then it'll um, it will obviously make it louder and if it's quiet it'll make it softer and the whole point of this is to just match the volume levels for your environment and also not to have 
um, loads of audio spill bleeding out into the general um, vicinity so everyone can hear what you're saying and what people are saying to you. We've also got, you know, this is the screen. Zopa are very proud about this. I mean, I've talked about it all already, but it's quite funny there. They seem to be calling everything feverish. Quite sure what that means. Obviously, it doesn't mean feverish as in bad, you're ill, but this display is feverish. I think what they mean is it's very vivid and it looks clear and sharp. We've also got feverish performance, of course. So this is the 1.7 gigahertz. Um, Cortex A7 CPU that I was talking about and feverish shooting and again so this is just about the camera so a quick word about this we've got the 5 megapixel front camera that is going to be fantastic for Google Hangouts and um, video chats and that sort of thing but what's really really impressive about the back camera apart from being 14 megapixels it's got an f2.0 aperture so for people who don't really know what that means that's a pretty wide fast aperture and that means you're going to get great performance it's going to be even better in um, dark low light situations and it's going to be fantastic in um, bright daytime situations so this just means that more light can get into the camera sensor so you get better quality photos you get shorter shutter times for sharper photos and if you're a bit of a photographer it means you probably get much nicer looking photos, especially for portraits, because you'll have much narrower depth of fields, so you get this nice blur in the background and perfectly sharp in focus subjects. Um, and Zopa are also obviously boasting that the camera sensor is really good, it's got low brightness error, low colour error. We're sure that it won't be the best sort of, um, it won't be the best quality photos on any smartphone, but with 14 megapixels it's sure to look pretty great. Um, what else have we got? This is quite weird. This is the feverish touch feature. So Zopo seems to be sort of following Samsung and adding these kind of not quite so useful features. But this is going to be quite interesting. It's just basically touch gestures to um, to operate different aspects of your phone. So no matter um, whether you're in standby and you've got the black screen, instead of having to turn your phone screen on, unlock navigate to where you want to go. Apparently if you just quickly do a Z, don't know why they've chosen Z for this, you can go into the desktop, C for calling, that makes more sense, E for the browser, I guess that's um, Internet Explorer or E online stuff, on W for WeChat, which is um, an instant messaging program that's not really popular over here, but it's interesting nonetheless. I'm not sure whether there's going to be customization to let you define your own gestures and your own apps, it's kind of interesting that Zopa have chosen, you know, Latin alphabet characters rather than Chinese characters for this, but I guess that makes it simpler and quicker for people all around the world. And so with that chipset, so I said before, it's a MediaTek chipset that's containing this new CPU. It's also got the Mali 450 GPU, which is, it's obviously the latest version of the Mali GPU. It looks great and it's going to make... Um, Scrolling around, because that uses the GPU and the Android interface, it's going to make that nice, smooth and buttery. And of course, gameplay is going to be fantastic with this 8-core processor. The increased parallelization that allows is going to make it, you know, really, really easy to run high-end games. And it's going to score great scores and benchmarks. In fact, we've already seen some benchmarks suggesting that it's going to be quite a lot more powerful than the Samsung Galaxy S4, if you can believe that. So it's hitting sort of 28,000 on Antutu benchmark, which is absolutely phenomenal. Um, Zopo also say it's high sensitive of human screen touch. Basically that means it's a sensitive touch screen. It works. Um, it's multi-touch and it's going to respond to what you're pressing. So again, like I said, just forgive the slightly dodgy Chinese translations. Zopo also say it is so easy. So this is again... You know, this has been seen, this sort of feature has been seen in some Samsung smartphones. Basically, you wave your hands across the screen and the front sensors will detect the movement of your hands and it'll, you can turn pages and e-books and, uh, I guess, flick through photo albums or whatever. And, of course, we've got more function than ever. So, what well, this is just basically saying, we've got our standard stuff. We've got Wi-Fi, we've got Wi-Fi Direct, we've got NFC, we've got USB on the go, we've got Bluetooth 4.0. You can... Um, beam the display onto your computer through Wi-Fi. Um, and we've also got these weird little symbol in the bottom right-hand corner. I'm not sure that's referring to. The top right, again, looks to be 
saying we can use a Bluetooth keyboard with this um, phone. So the only other thing they've got is we've got a special chip in it that means well, I mean, I've tried to decipher this little photograph. I'm not really sure why you'd want to be holding your phone out at a 30 degree angle, but it's just basically saying you're still going to get decent call quality no matter at what weird angle you're holding your phone. And it's also got noise reduction, so hopefully it's going to be sounding a bit clearer when you're making phone calls to someone. And we've got quick key of camera. So what that means, dedicated shutter button, which is great. It'll be interesting to see how fast the shutter response is on this phone with this 14 megapixel camera, but it's always useful to have a dedicated shutter key for using the phone in landscape mode. And so that's basically it. I mean, as you can see, this is going to be a really powerful phone. It looks great. It comes in two colors, black and white. We're really excited to get our hands on it and see how well it performs. The most exciting thing about this phone, okay, it looks like it can beat the Galaxy S4 in benchmarks. Wait until you hear the price. $300. That is only about £180, um, I guess, probably just over €200. Euros. So, can you imagine getting an unlocked, rooted phone running Android Jelly Bean with these absolutely to die for specs, better performance than the Galaxy S4, and it only costs 180 quid. I mean, that's about three times less than the Galaxy S4 costs unlocked. So, this is one to look out for. We'll be coming with much more news about this in the future. Stay tuned, subscribe, comment, like, and thanks for listening. Bye.